Welcome back to another video. We're back in the garage doing some work on the bay liner. It is super hot today, so excuse my lovely outfit, all my sweat. It's supposed to be like 104 today. I have the garage doors open. So today we're going to be looking at a 12 volt outlet install. I originally installed the 12 volt that I got from Lowe's and I thought it would be good quality. It's got a fuse inside. I was like, sweet, I'm protected. It has a 12 volt and then it has two USBs because we need to be able to charge our cell phones, but the main reason we need the 12 volt is for the tube blowing it up. So I installed this. The problem is it has super cheap, super cheap and thin wire. So it can't hold the load. So I took it on the lake, I actually needed to blow the tube up and it didn't work. It would run for maybe five seconds and then it would quit. So I'm sure I was overloading something. So I went ahead and just uninstalled it. I, I took it all out. So now I'm gonna actually hardwire it straight to the battery with an on off toggle switch. And we'll show you that now. Here is the switch. It is a three prong switch. Um, it just flips on and off and it does have a red LED light. I wanted to match the on off lighted stock switches. Now, I'll tell you, one thing I do not like about Bayliner, especially for this boat, is you cannot purchase the pieces and parts online. You have to go to the dealer and the dealer has to order it. I don't know how long that takes. Hopefully this helps somebody else and save a lot of money. I can't imagine what the dealer will charge but I know my dealer is like 70 something an hour and you know they're going to charge you a minimum of an hour this will probably take somebody a couple hours so I'm not paying for that I do it myself I'm pretty good at wiring so I'll show you the wiring I'll show you the light switch install I have bought 14 gauge wire 20 feet of negative positive then off eBay, I purchased a 12 volt flush mount socket. With that, for less than $10, it came with, oh, a couple feet worth of wiring. It has an inline fuse, which you always need an inline fuse when you're running something like this. I'm going to cut these off because these are a little small for my battery terminal, but I have bigger ones, so I'll cut these off, put new ones on, and I will use heat shrink to clean up what um, ever is exposed there. I really love it comes with these and they have these little boots on them so waterproof or it just helps protect them from corroding maybe. These were about five something a piece. This was uh, three, four bucks. So we're gonna install this and I'll show you the panel. There is this panel. This panel does not come out. It actually um, has this caulking around it but underneath there's a hole so you're actually able to remove four screws the navigation lights anchor lights bilge there's an accessory and then a horn so basically i'm going to use the accessory put my new switch in this piece just pops out okay there is little fins on it so you do have to remove this plate to get this off pinch in the pieces and it slides right out you see this is the wiring. Now I do have the wiring undone, so it'll come out a little farther. If you do not cut the plastic zip ties, then the plate won't pull out far enough. You can see the accessory hole. Now what catches this plate is these right here. So if you watch, see how they hit? So you actually have to tilt it down, put this under, and then you can go to the back. Now we're gonna get to the install. First thing you wanna do, disconnect the battery. As you can see, I've disconnected the power. I've also loosened the negative because we're gonna run our negative to there anyway. So basically they're both off, power wires down there. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the toggle switch. Back of the toggle switch is here. You can watch a YouTube video. There's tons of YouTube videos on which um, and how to wire three prong two-way switches. And that's what it looks like from the front view. Once you have that done, now we're gonna wire the 12 volt plug and it's going to go somewhere under here and you're going to drill a hole it requires a half inch hole i do not have a half inch drill bit um, i'm able to improvise a little bit i got plenty of tools but this requires a half inch drill bit so 
you may want to buy one. I went ahead and put my 12 volt under here. You have to be careful drilling into fiberglass. You don't want to crack it. You don't want to damage it. So watch more YouTube videos on how to drill into fiberglass before you just start going to town. So on to the next step, we're going to wire that switch. Alrighty, so to give you an example of my accessory wire, which is going to run from the toggle switch to the 12 volt socket. Basically, I have a piece of wire and on each end I have placed the proper connection and I have heat shrinked it so it looks nice and clean. So the accessory is going to go down to the socket. The last time you saw we have the accessory wire hooked up, we have the 12 volt socket in. Now I need to run the wires from the back near the battery up to the front. I'm too lazy to go inside and get a coat hanger. One thing that's nice about the element is that it's all one fiberglass hole. So literally you can stick your head in under the back by the battery and see all the way up to the front. So we're going to use the hook, the water hook. I use if I drop something in the water and basically here's my line. This is all the extra line. I just laid it in there. I reached under. I used some tape to stick it on here and then we're going to fish this right up there and I'm sure you can see the light tip of advice when you have your socket here and you hook your wires to it the, a flush mount has a ring that screws on to tighten it on the back just like a toggle switch does so make sure you put that ring on the wires on the inside before you hook everything up otherwise you'll hook it up stick it in and realize you can't get the ring around the socket to tighten it on I have just a standard hook, it's all nice and neat. I have my power wire in there and I have my proper fuse. You see the cables in there. Nothing is cleaned up yet. I have to plug it in, hook it up, make sure it'll run for a while. It does turn on. Um, we have the tube right here. We're gonna run a full test and I'm gonna blow the entire tube up. Maybe a quick little time lapse here. I'll speed it up for you at least because it takes couple, I don't know, maybe a minute or something. It's a pretty good pump. Um, my 12 volt jump pack will not even run this thing. So as you can see, it worked and uh, it's perfect. It worked, it never got hot and everything stayed connected. So now I know that it works. It's not gonna fail on me out on the water like the last one did. So oh, it is done, 100% complete. Everything is zip tied up and now I will show you the final product, the captain's seat. If you look down, we have a cell phone holder. We can put a cell phone in there and then we can buy a little adapter. So we can um, plug it into there, plug our cell phones in. Um, as you just saw, we are able to blow up the tube. Switch panel, as you can see, it's all screwed back in. It doesn't look that bad. It's pretty clean looking, you know, and this one is the accessory. This is the new one that I got from um, AutoZone flip it on it turns red it's clean it's out of the way now you have a choice you could put it here you could put it here I think stock elements have a little compartment here and they put it in there from the battery the negative you see the black wire and then the red running up there and then basically I have it zip tied all the way under I have a whole mess to clean up so we'll see you on the next video let me know if you have any questions comments Hopefully it helps somebody. We'll see you on the next video. It was fun.